Good morning, everyone. My name is Prophetess Lou. Welcome to the Glory Room. I hope you all are having a blessed day. Um, let's get started with a word of prayer, then we'll get started with our devotional. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your your blood. We thank you for allowing us to make it through another week, Father God, even though if our week was hard or if it was it was a good week, either way, Father God, we just thank you for it. We, Father God, we ask you today to help us understand your word. Help us to, to uh, apply your word to our life. Help us to change, Father God. Father God, we ask you to open our ears for us to hear and open our eyes for us to see. Father God, bless the ones that are reading it and bless the ones that are hearing it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Key verse of the day is 2 Thessalonians 3 and 6. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brothers who's walking in idleness and not in accordance with the tradition that you received from us. Topic, walking in God, not idleness. Affirmations, I'm going to say it and pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like. I am loved by God. I have a clear mind. I am speaking from a loving place. I am walking in God. We as believers of Christ must stay away from people that aren't going down the straight and narrow. They aren't living in the traditions that we are taught at church, Bible study, or devotional. Because what tends to happen is we sometimes start doing what people of the world do because it seems relaxed or fun or hip. At the moment, it seems cool. But in the long run, we become separated from God. In today's verse, Paul is telling them to keep away from people that are idle and that don't receive and, and accept the traditions of what they have been taught. If you leave someone or something is left idle, they become lazy or slothful. It becomes not worth our time or anything, and they usually are lost in Christ. They're so settled in their ways. They're settled in, in ways that are that we begin to pick up, that then we refuse to see that their life isn't going anywhere because they don't have God in them. Romans 16 and 17 says, Now I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who create divisions and obstacles that are contrary to the teachings you have learned. Turn turn away from them. Again, Paul says, urge, warn. He tells us, don't follow people that create divisions and obstacles because these people are only wanting to cause problems because they are carrying a spirit of confusion. And when we, when we are, when we are people that should be carrying a spirit of peace and love, still when you find someone that trying to make things complicated and always wanting to fight and fuss about everything, they don't even see it because the enemy has them blinded to their life. They are so blinded that sometimes they blame everyone else for their shortcomings instead of realizing it's them that have caused their life heartaches and misery. First Corinthians 11 and 2 tells us, now I commend you for remembering me in everything and for maintaining the traditions just as I pass them on to you. He says, remember me, remember traditions and things I have taught you because that is what's going to carry you, not the things of this world. That's what's going to make you spiritually strong, not not this world. The traditions of this world has created co- created to cause us to go back to our flesh. It's there to please the flesh, not our, our spirit. Man, stay away from those traditions. Paul has tried to lay a good foundation for people to fall in that day, but the but they continuously go back to what they, they did because they didn't want to stay away from people and things that could lead them away. Just like us in today's society, in Philippians 2.16, it says, holding fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. He tells us, hold on to the word of life which is the Bible, hold on fast to it. Because when we don't hold fast to the word, we are going to lose sight of our walk with God. We must hold fast to the things of the word to live a holy life. The Christian, the Corinthian church was having difficulties on every side. And Paul wanted them to know that whatever you do in order to stay in the walk with Christ, stay in the word. For us to, for us to know the traditions and teaching of the word, we must hold fast to it or hold on to it and learn and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us each time we open our word. Because the more we read, the more we commune with him, 
more we can mean when, when being around people that are sitting idle, that aren't living holy while wanting to pull away. Today, we have to do two things. One, stay away from idle people. Two, hold fast to the word of God. And three, please don't allow the world's traditions to change the traditions we know. The Holy Spirit wants to lead us away from people and things so that will cause us to be idle in our walk with Christ, creating divisions and obstacles with people. We don't judge people. We don't point out people's flaws. What we as believers must do is not follow their ways and take on what they do, but take on the lifestyle of Christ and be ple- and be a pleasure of God and be pleasing of God and not a ple- pleasure of man. Try that today. Follow Christ's example on how to handle situations in life troubles. Prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, we ask you if we are following the traditions of the world, please remove them from us. Please show us what we are doing and help us to follow you. Lord, we desire to please you, not our flesh and not man. Lord, we ask you to protect us from all harm and danger. Help us to have ears to hear and when you speak to us and eyes to see what you are doing what we are doing wrong. Lord, we are sorry if we have been participating in the things of the flesh and not in the right things. Lord, give us zeal for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So today's topic is walking in God, not idleness. So what happens a lot of times is we meet someone or we have friends and buddies and they believe one thing and we believe another. And what we're taught in church and Bible study and devotion is to walk in the light. We're taught not to participate things in the world, but to participate in things in the word. And see, a lot of times what happens is because we're trying to look cool in front of our friends and look like we're, we still are hip and we, we, we know what's going on. We're down with the latest trends. We follow what they do instead of setting the tone and saying, this is who I am now, or this is what I do. I don't do this. And a lot of people find that hard to do because everybody wants to be in the in crowd. Everyone wants to be known. Everyone wants to be popular. But is popularity or is being known or being cool or hip? I don't know the latest words, but if you're, if that's what you want to be, is that worth losing your relationship with Christ? Because the traditions of this world is going to tell you to to smoke excessively, to drink excessively, to go out there and, and fill your eyes with whatever you want to fill your eyes with, fill your pockets up before you pay your tithes or, or, um, steal or kill or, 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 or do anything contrary to the word of God. That's what the world wants you to do is everything's for the pleasing of the flesh. It's not trying to please God. This world is not trying to please God. It's trying to do everything but do that. And Paul is warning the Corinthian church, don't allow people that are idle, that are slothful, to pull you away from things that you know. And that was the problem with the Corinthian church, and that's the problem we have today. We are so busy trying to, to make others feel good. We're so busy trying to make ourselves feel good. But how are we making God feel? Are we being Christ seekers, God pleasers? Are we being self-pleasers? It's a difference. When we go to links to pleasing people, that's what we're doing. But do we go links to please God? Do we read our Bible? Do we pray? Do we talk to him? Do we commune with him? Do we worship him? Do we adore him? Because at the end of the day, when we're in need and our back's against the wall, we don't know what we're going to do about this, or we don't know what we, we don't know what we're going to do about that. God is going to be there, not those people. They will be there maybe for a little while until they have to go to work, or until they have something bigger to do, or they have another friend they have to see about. But God's going to be there till the end. He would never leave you or forsake you. He would never make you feel small. He would never make you feel like you're not good enough. Even though all of us are not good enough, but he would never make us feel like that. God will always make us feel so loved. He will always go the extra length to make sure we are good. 
How many people in this world would do that for you? We don't have too many people. It was some steps that was given in the devotional. It says, one, stay away from idle people. We just talked about it. Hold fast to the word of God. When we hold fast to the word of God, when we read the word of God, we take moments in the day and read the word of God, we are going to change. But we have to apply it. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, not just read it. It's easy to pick up anything and read it. But if I ask you what you just read, or what verse did we just read, which was second, was second Thessalonians 3 and 6, now we command you, brothers, in the name of Jesus Lord Christ, that you keep away from any brothers who's walking an idol that's not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. If you can't tell me what that verse reading read, and you're reading chapter 3 of Second Thessalonians, you're not reading. You're not reading understanding. And I think that's what that that's that what a lot of people don't like to do. They don't want to read and comprehend it. They just want to read it because it's a daily thing. You're like, okay, this is a chore. I put it down on my schedule. I log it in. This is what I have to do. Okay, but reading it, did you learn anything while you're reading? Did you take time to break down that verse? Like, if you didn't understand this verse, you, you go online. Let's, I'm going to type it in real quick. It's a website, just so you're, everyone knows. It's called Bible Hub. In that website, it gives you it broken down, that verse broken down in so many different ones. New International Version, NLT, ESV, BSV, um, King James, New King James Version. The list goes on. All these are broken down, have broken down this verse for you or I to understand. Knowing me, I picked the NIV version. Let's just see what the ESV verse says. And it says, now we command you, brothers, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who's walking idleness and not in accordance with the traditions that you receive from us. You see how different that sounds? And you go there and you compare and you're like, okay, I understand what he's saying. That's Holding fast to the word of God, not reading it fast, but holding it fast. That means applying it to our life. That means holding on to it when everything else fails. That means reading it when we don't even read the paper, we read this. That means reading this before we watch the, the highlights of the playoffs. That means reading this before we go binge watch Netflix. That's what it means holding fast. That what mean what it means to put it as priority. We got to learn to do that. And another step. Let's go to the third step in this reference in the devotional. I'm sorry. It says, please don't allow the world's traditions to change the traditions you know or we know. The world will start teaching us things that isn't according to the word of God. The world will start viewing things as okay. It's topics that people are afraid to talk to because they don't want to lose views or they don't want to lose people. But we as pastors or teachers or prophets or apostles, whoever is teaching, we must teach on those things and say, no, that that's wrong. That's not what you follow. No, that's not what you believe in. People are so easy to Make everyone else feel good. But are you giving out the word of God? If you're at a church that's not applying the Bible's traditions, but they're applying the word's tradition, the world's traditions quickly, instead of the word's traditions, I will stay away from that church. Because the Bible tells us that in the last days that it will be people that look for it, that, that, that will start teaching for itchy ears. People that that want to hear the things that makes them feel good. See, people are all game to hear about blessings, blessings, and how God would enlarge their territory. But no one wants to hear about how to commune with that same God that's going to enlarge their territory. No one wants to hear about how to read about that same God that's going to enlarge their territory. Everybody wants the blesser, but not everybody wants the blessings, but not the blesser. It's almost like everybody wants a bigger house, but they don't want the bills. Hello? <laughs> everybody wants a relationship, but they don't want to stand in their relationship. When things get hard, they want a jet. 
No. That's not what you do. You pray during those hard times. You talk it out during those hard times. Not just leave. See, people won't, 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 but they don't want to put in the work to keep, 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 keep. Just like the spiritual gifts. Everybody won't prophecy, healing, and all, all the rest of the gifts, but no one wants to put in the work to learn how to operate in those gifts. See, God's not going to give us gifts that we're going to just sit on. We talked about that this week. He's going to give us gifts that he know we're going to use. And as we use these gifts, we're, we're going to grow in those gifts. But back to idleness, we got to remember that these are the world traditions isn't going to help us get to heaven. Let's look at our first reference verse, which is Colossians 3.17. If you have your Bible, go to Colossians. Verse 17, we in the NIV. Okay. Whatever you do, wherever in the word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the, the Father, through him. It says, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. Whether you are carrying the word of God, whether you're teaching the word of God, do it all in the name of Jesus. We never want to be people that just do something just because. Because the thing is, is that people are going to look at you and say, let's take me for example. Well, Prophetess Lewis is teaching on the Bible, but she didn't give us all the, the references. She didn't give us all the facts. She only told us half of it. You, people are going to look at me because I didn't teach well. Because I didn't feel like doing it in the name of God. I was just doing it just for looks and kicks and giggles. No, when you teach the word of God, when you're praying with people, whatever you're doing, praying, reading the Bible, feeding the needy, uh, talking to someone about salvation, whatever it is, do it in the name of God, whether it's in deed or word. Whatever it is, do it in the name of God, and he will be with you. He will excel you. He will push you forward because you're doing it for him. But when we start doing it in our name, or we start doing it for looks, we won't go far. Nothing won't change. Nothing won't move. You won't save a soul because you're doing it all because, oh, look at me, look at me, look at me. No, look at Christ, look at Christ, look at Christ. We have to start giving God reference. We have to start doing everything for God because that's who we on this earth for. That's who we are vessels for. We're not vessels for this world, but we're vessels for God. And we have to start walking like it, talking like it, acting like it. Because the moment that we start doing things to please people, that's the moment you're going to see your life slowly changing. Because you start compromising. Well, let me do this because this, this is about even. Let me, let me make sure I, I don't say this because I don't want to offend anyone. Oh, let me not talk about this because I don't want to offend no one. Oh, I don't want to talk about this because I don't want to lose views. I don't want to talk about this because I want thumbs up. I post every day on Facebook and no one likes my videos. I have over 2,700 friends. And it's not to say that no one will like it, but people are not going to thumbs up a Christian video. But people will quickly thumbs up a, a fight in Walmart, a fight in the mall, or a fight over a guy or a woman. People will thumbs up that. But they won't thumbs up a YouTube video or a podcast. But guess what? I it doesn't matter to me. And, and it's not to say I don't. I don't care. Because I know that someone is listening to it and is touching someone's soul, and I'm not doing it for the thumbs up. I'm not doing it for someone to click it the heart it. I'm not doing it for the notification bells to go off. I'm doing it because that's what God put me on this earth to do is to teach the word of God. We have to start taking our eyes of what makes people comfortable and what makes people happy and start teaching the word of God and start sharing the word of God and start telling our friends, no, that's not who I am. I don't want to be idle. I want to be strong because the moment you start being idle, you lose power. Your anointing slips. Your views on life slip because you're compromising with Satan. 
you're compromising with the enemy. Let's look at our second reference verse. Second Timothy 3 and 5. Once again, we're still in the NIV. Now, I want to say this. It's not that I'm so cocky that I don't care or I'm so conceited that I don't care in that level. But notifications and someone clicking it is it's not what I put videos out for. The Holy Spirit gives me these videos. I put them out. He gives me these devotions. I put them. Per, I, I, I send them out. This ministry is built on the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, not on people. I don't care if I'm just teaching a one person for the rest of my life. I'm going to teach that one person like I'm teaching to a thousand. We have to understand that our life is for the glory of God, not for people. And once we accept that, once we understand that, we will elevate in the word. We will elevate in our teaching, in our videos and, and, and papers and Whatever we do, our teachers will start reaching the right people because we're putting God before looks. Amen. Okay, Second, this, Second Timothy 3 and 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying his power. Having nothing to do with such people. Having a form of godliness, but denying his power. We have people now. This, to me, this is what it's saying. That I'm a Christian. I have a form of godliness, but when I get behind closed doors, when I get in front of people, I'm denying the power of God because that's what you're doing. You're denying the power of God in your life. You're denying denying the power of God moving that that, that saves you. That's what we're doing. We're, we're wearing the title Christian, but we don't proclaim the, the good news. We have the title of a Christian, but we don't hold fast to the things of God. We have the title of God. We have the title of a Christian, but we deny knowing him. We're Peter. Instead of saying, yeah, I know God. Yeah, I do that. Yes, I do pray. Yes, I do worship. I tell people all the time, when I get home, that's my time with God. And everyone knows, do not text me. Do not call me. I've gotten into so many different arguments with people because they're like, I know you're at home. I know you just got off, got off work. And you don't even answer the phone. No, because that's my time with God. That's my time with my husband because Jesus is my husband. I have no husband. He is my husband. That is my time with him. I'm not going to deny the power that's moving in my life from God. I'm not going to deny God moving in my life for just to talk to someone. I'm not going to deny the, the power of God that's moving in my life to make someone feel comfortable. Because people don't like to feel uncomfortable nowadays. People are so easily offended. So we compromise with the sensitivity of people. But what about the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit? Hmm? What about slipping out? The words that we slip out, offending the Holy Spirit. Hmm? When we do things that we shouldn't do, the Holy Spirit steps back. He don't go away. He do not go away, but he steps back. So what about his sensitivity? Because he's sensitive. He's sensitive to what we listen to. He's sensitive to what we talk about. He's sensitive about what we do. But are we prioritizing our life? Setting our life? Like we set the thermometer in our house for cool or hot. Are we setting the thermometer in our life for the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit or people? That's basically what the word of God is saying today. How are you setting the temperature in your life? How are you operating in sensitivity to the Holy Spirit that you carry inside you? Is the Holy Spirit active in your life? Is he talking to you? Are you hearing him? Because he's talking, but are you hearing him? Because he will disactivate. He will step back and become very quiet. Because you are too busy worried about Susan. When Susan is not the one to help pay your bills. You're worried about Bob. Hurting Bob. But you're not worried about what you said in front of the Holy Spirit. We have to start getting control over what is priority in our life. No, I'm not saying to do anything that's, that's going to cost you your job. 
I'm not saying to do anything that's going to get you arrested. You know, if they say, hey, you can't stand here and preach and teach, you know, you got to leave. No, I've got to stand here. No, no, don't get yourself arrested. That's not what Prophet is saying. I'm saying operate in a way that is sensitive to the Holy Spirit and not people. Because at the end of the day, people aren't going to be there for you. Because they're mere men with mere men limitations. But God is a God that is full of power and strength. He's a God that heals the broken hearted. He's a God that heals and that teaches and that loves and that created you in your mother's womb. Start pleasing him, not people. Hope you all enjoyed this devotional. Um, I really um, enjoyed it a lot. Um, I've had an opportunity recently where I was getting a large following on my swell account from a certain group of people. And um, when I got the teaching on a certain topic, it was a bunch of them unfollowed me. And um, I remember when I went to my account, I seen the, the drastic unfollow because on there I got maybe, I had right at 400 and then it dwindled down, dwindled down at the time to 370. Now it's back to 392, but the point is that the numbers dropped. And I remember sitting there thinking to myself, hmm, oh well. Because right is right. And at the end of the day, when I meet God, or I meet Jesus, and he asks me, Lou, why didn't you talk about this? Why did you compromise the word of God for people? Why did you compromise your life to make people feel good? I have to give an account. We all have to give an account. My life is, I told God when I gave my life to him, that my life from now on is for him. Because I had done everything I wanted to do. I have been to the lowest, to the highest of my life. And now my life and my time is dedicated to knowing him and pleasing him at every moment. So if something is said on here that, that offends you because I said it, I'm sorry if I offend you, but it's the truth. I'm going to always teach the truth in someone's pride. Because my God is bigger. Your God is bigger than people. Have a blessed day. Remember Jesus loves you. Remember to turn away from the things of the tradition of the world and hold fast to the word of God. Thank you. Have a blessed day.